Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see about the topic introduction to finite automata in compiler design. What is a finite automata? It is a finite state machine that acts as a recognizer for a language. The FA will recognize the regular expression. It is nothing but a set of strings and accepts it if it represents a regular language. Otherwise, it will reject that regular expression. When finite automata accepts the regular expression, it will compile it to form a transition diagram. It has two states, accept state or reject state. When the input string is processed successfully and it reaches its final state, then it is considered as accept state. Otherwise, it is considered as reject state. Now, we will see the formal definition of finite automata. It is a collection of five tuples, namely Q, Sigma, Delta, Q0 and F where q represents the finite set of states sigma represents the finite set of input symbols q naught is the initial state f is the final state and delta is the transition function now we will see how to represent the finite automata it can be represented in two ways one is transition diagram or otherwise called a state transition diagram and other one is transition table first we will see about transition diagram it is a directed graph which can be constructed using certain notations. So, there will be a node for each state in Q which is represented by a circle and there exists a directed edge from the node Q to node P which is labeled with the edge A. Here A is the input and Q and P are the states. If there exists a transition function like delta of Q comma A is equal to P. So, here Q is the current state and A is the input on which the transition will happen and P is the next state. And in the start state, there is an arrow with no source. Accept state and final states are indicated by double circle. And now we will see the notations used in the transition diagram. So, here this circle represents a particular state and arrow will indicate the transition from one state to another. So, start state can be represented either like this that is arrow with no source uh, and then indicating the initial state or else you can write it as Q naught bar and final state can be indicated either as Q n or double circled Q n. Now, we will see about transition table. It is a tabular representation of the transition function. So, it takes two arguments that is a state and a symbol and returns the next state. So, here uh, symbol is nothing but the input. The transition table can be represented by following notations. So, columns will represent the input symbols and rows will represent the states and entries corresponds to the next state. The start state is denoted by an arrow with no source and the accept state is denoted by star. Now, let us see the example for state transition diagram and transition table. So, this is the example for transition diagram. So, we have start state indicating with arrow with the no source and Q0 is the initial state. So, 0 and 1 are the uh, edges or uh, which is called as inputs and the final state is indicated with the double circle. So, this is the transition table for this particular transition diagram. So, we have three columns present state, uh, next state for input 0 and next state for input 1 because we have two inputs that is 0 and 1 in the diagram. So, we have mentioned two columns for the inputs. So, initial state is represented with arrow with no source and the final state is represented with star as we have seen in the previous slide. So, now how it has been uh, constructed. So, Q naught, so Q for the Q naught, the next state for input 0. So, for Q naught with input 0, it goes to Q1. So, that is what we have written Q1 here and then for Q naught, the next state of input 1. So, Q naught with input 1. So, where it goes? It goes to Q2. So, that is what it is Q2. Similarly, for Q1. So, Q1 if you take for 0, it goes to Q naught and for 1, it goes to Q2. So, that is what Q naught and Q2. And for Q2, 
for 0 it goes to q2 and for 1 also it goes to same state that is q2 so that is uh, mentioned here so this is the state transition diagram and transition table for finite automata next we'll see the types of finite automata so there are two kinds of finite automata one is deterministic finite automata which is uh, in short called as dfa and another one is non-deterministic finite automata. In short, we call it as NFA. So, first we will see about DFA. So, in DFA, for a particular input character, the machine will go to only one state. So, the transition for one input character will be going to only one state. Also, in DFA, null or epsilon moves are not allowed. That is, DFA cannot change the state without any input character. The DFA has five tuples similar to finite automata. So, Q, sigma, Q naught, F and delta, it has the same uh, definition as we have seen earlier. Q is the set of all states. Sigma is the set of all input alphabets. Q naught is the initial state and F is the set of final states and delta is the transition function which can be represented as q into sigma to q. q is the uh, current state and sigma is the input alphabet. It will, based on this, it will go to the next state that is q. Now, we will see the example of deterministic finite automata. So, here is the transition diagram. So, in the above example, we can see that uh, for single input A, for single input A, state 0 state 0 will transit to only one state that is 1 so for one input it can go to only one state so that is the main point in dfa and the transition table for this dfa is given here so we have states the input uh, a and b so for 0 the next state for a is 1 for 0 the next state for b uh, it goes to itself okay so that's what it is zero for one uh, the next state for a so for one the next state for a is itself so it is one for one the next state for b is two so here one uh, two two the edge is labeled with b so it is two similarly we have to write for two and three so this is the transition table for dfa next uh, we'll see about uh, nfa so nfa is similar to dfa except it has some additional features that is null or epsilon move is allowed in nfa in dfa it is not allowed but in nfa it is allowed it can move forward without reading any symbols also and it has the ability to transmit to any number of states for a particular input in dfa for one particular input it can go to only one state but here for one particular input it can go to any number of states so this is the main difference between dfa and nfa so due to this additional features the only difference is uh, available in transition function the remaining and all same so the transition function is changed like this so q into sigma union epsilon because we are allowing epsilon moves here so we are making the union of epsilon here and the next state will be any number of states. So, it is mentioned as 2 power q. Now, we will see the example of NFA. So, this is the state diagram. So, in this example, we can notice that state 0 with input symbol A, either it goes to itself or it goes to 1. So, this is the uh, difference between DFA and NFA. The transition table is given below. So, here for state 0, and the input A, either it goes to 0 or 1. For input B, uh, it goes to itself. So, it is 0. For input epsilon, here we do not have any epsilon uh, moves in the diagram. So, it is considered as null. And for state 1, for state 1, input A, no, it is not going anywhere. So, it is null. For uh, B, it is going to 2, so it is mentioned as 2. And for epsilon, no move, so it is represented as null. Similarly, we have to write for 2 and 3 also. So, thus we have discussed about the concept of uh, finite automata, its representation and its types. Thank you.